Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to I See Melanie and today we're going to be talking about Season 7 of Love is Blind reunion episode except you won't be seeing me today because my eyelids have puffed up like crazy and I look like a freak of nature but hopefully after some more Benadryl and a little bit of time I'll be back to normal and I'll be showing my face again so today's episode, today's video will just be narrated. Okay, let's get our first couple out of the way. Taylor and Garrett, they're the first ones up. They are happy together. They have decided not to move to California. Garrett grew out his hair. He's tapped into his fashion sense. Everything is good with them. That's really it. I'm not going to spend too much time with them. Now let's talk about Tim and Alex. So we've learned that they haven't really talked since their breakup. And really not much has changed with them. They're still kind of going back and forth about the logistics of their breakup and their fights and so on. But one thing I'll say is, you know, it would have been nice if we had some idea of all the things that went down between them to understand how they ended up exactly where they are. So say, for example, that fight that happened in Mexico. So they were arguing and apparently it got to a point where Alex called Tim a little bitch, which you know, that's not the nicest thing to hear from your fiance. Um, he was probably acting immaturely and stubbornly and throwing a tantrum like we've seen. But this once again begs a question of is a dating show like this a good idea? And I still stand that I think that the entire premise of this show is terrible. The idea that you are going to hitch yourself to a stranger who you don't know. You don't know about their history. You don't really know about their idiosyncrasies. You don't know about their personality types. You don't know about any of their habits. Not, not a good idea. And to me, I think with Tim and Alex, I think they're both fundamentally good people. Like I think Tim is annoying and I think Tim needs to grow up, but I don't think he's a bad guy. I just think that they are just very different types of people and so they just wouldn't work well especially with this accelerated timeline so we also found out this is another thing that bothers me about this show is that, again a lot of missing pieces that we don't know so we learned that the night after or the same night um that tim talked to alex's dad and you know gave that grandiose speech about how much he loves his daughter that same night he went to Alex and said that he had doubts or the night afterwards, but like, okay. So that obviously would cloud, um, Alex's opinion of what Tim is like and make her not so, you know, excited to meet his parents <laughs> when she knows there's a good chance that this wedding isn't going to go through. So we learned that, yeah, she learned that shortly before she met his parents. And also we learned that the night before she met them she was working and that she had a big long day and that she had to work that same night and so that's part of the reason why she took a nap so this information again we had no context for this information and if he knew that which i'm sure he did then you know why are you so surprised that she took a nap like why would this be such a weird thing again he's very rigid so he probably thinks okay my parents came all this way you should spend more time with them and be more excited to see them but with all that history all of what happened in the days and hours preceding of course things aren't going to go well and on a side note okay netflix you know you are getting so much viewership because of this show you can't fly these people's parents in to see to, to, to see their their future daughter-in-law you can't fly these two people i understand maybe not flying in everybody not people's sisters or brothers or cousins but you can't fly these two people over they netflix can do better but yeah i think uh, vanessa mentioned that they are like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole or whatever the analogy is like i just think they're fundamentally mismatched and again tim he hasn't to me in this year shown that he has really grown and i do believe he's got issues we all have issues i have issues it's all good but he doesn't seem to be he doesn't seem to have learned or have owned anything or recognized that his stubbornness is 
an issue. It will be an issue for our partner. It will be an issue for anybody really who has to deal with him. And so I, for him, I wish him um, good luck in that journey. And I thought it was funny, um, um, Vanessa mentioned, oh, maybe you guys should talk about this backstage because they're kind of going back and forth. And after a while, it's like, what's what's the point? You're clear, they're clearly at an impasse. You're not together. So who really cares at this point? And so I think Alex said she was amenable to it. I think Tim said no, but I think, yeah, what is the point? There's, there's no point. On to Monica and Steven. I personally find Steven so revolting. I'm sorry. I just find him to be so gross. <laughs> and so, yeah. So again, the sleep test comes up. And at, oh, I think the first time we hear Steven really talk is when he was just kind of chiming in, having to do um, with, his, with the subject of meat. And I think it was when Tim was talking about grilling the meat on the grill for Alex's um, family. And then he said, oh, did I hear a piece of meat? Because I don't mind being compared to a piece of meat or something like that. It's like, you're, you're just so annoying. And then again, he, and he was talking about how he's learned and how he accepts things and how he even wrote a letter to Monica's parents. It's like, and then Monica mentioned, oh, you just said that so you'd have a piece of evidence to show on this reunion that you're a good guy after all. It's like, I don't, I don't, who knows if that is true. It's all so silly. It's like, what? You don't even, I don't know. Sometimes I feel as though these characters are a little bit um, immature for their ages. Like you don't even know her parents. But anyway, let's just cast that aside for a second. But then when he was talking about the sleep study and his sleep apnea and this woman who he was texting. So somebody, I think he said he's never met, but they've been chatting online for the longest time. And the initial topic was about cancer or her cancer treatments. Then it devolved into talking about different kinks. It's like, oh my gosh, like, please just, just don't. And like, I don't know. Steven, again, as I mentioned, I think in, well, in the episode that um, they were last in, or I think actually even the last episode, they, Steven had no desire to get married. He didn't want to get married. Or if he wanted, if he wanted to get married, he didn't want to stay single. <laughs> so I don't think he should have been on the show. Monica, I wish her well. And uh, yeah, she should be very happy that she dodged that bullet. But I also think Again, going to the premise of this entire show. So you go into the show, you are coupled with this guy. You know that this guy isn't really your type, but you kind of like him. So you're going to go ahead and go through all the motions um, and get married to him because that's what you sought out, sought out to do. When I think it's it was pretty clear that this guy was not a match for her. This, this guy is not what she wanted. She didn't mention that like, his physicality or his looks aren't her usual type. And I, you know, I think that is probably the least of it. I think his personality and how garish he is and everything, I think that is more of the thing that Monica knows in her heart of hearts. This is not the man for her, but she, he is a man that was there. He is a man that proposed. And so she was willing to go on with it. And I don't think this is typical of just Monica. I think a lot of people who go on these types of shows probably feel this way, but it's just like, oh my gosh, really? You really want to marry somebody like that? Anyway, that's basically it with them. Let's go on to Marissa and Ramses. Now, Ramses looked like he'd rather be anywhere else but on that stage that night. And Marissa is clearly still um, impacted by the breakup. I think she broke out crying a little bit on the stage. So her feelings are still pretty raw. So obviously this was a big blow to her and, um, her mom was there for support and so on. Honestly, I just feel as though it was kind of a rehash of what we saw in the last episode, um, where Ramses again mentions the energies and things like that. And again, not to sound like a broken record, but I think that is an innate problem you'll have with a show like this is that yes, you might find somebody who ticks off 60% of the boxes, but there's some other boxes that you just know you're incompatible with. And it would have, would have been nice if he mentioned that he found her personality to be too much for him. I don't think, she, I think for, from what I know, I don't know Marissa, but she seems like a nice lady. Um, and you know, there are all sorts of different types. Like to me, like I'm a more of an extroverted person. And so I gravitate towards extroverted people too. Um, but I know a lot of introverts 
who I've seen say like, oh, I, I can't handle somebody like you or I can't ha be with somebody who's that forthcoming. They, they just get overwhelmed. And, you know, I trust what they say is correct. Um, I don't, I can't really relate to it, um, but that's how they feel. Uh, my only thing is that I wish he mentioned this sooner and not, you know, two days before the wedding. And yeah, and that's basically, I don't know, I feel as though they're kind of just rehashing things, but they're not together. I think Marissa dodged a bullet because if they did get married, they'd probably get divorced soon after. So that is them. Now let's go on to an honorable, honorable mention before we get on to the real messes. So we'll talk about Brittany and Leo. So I think I mentioned in the first episode when we saw Brittany is that I felt as though she was kind of putting on a show. I did not legit think she was actually as ditzy as she presented. Um, and I think actually, aside from Taylor, I think that Brittany is the most mature and realistic of all the women on the show because she recognized that, okay, Leo was the person who, you know, I decided to eventually be with. Um, again, she was frustrated with how he was stringing her along the entire time. And she was very vocal about that. But then she, she said, you know, after the engagement that she realized that I can't say I love this guy because I don't. And this guy is a stranger and they went on their trip and their relationship deteriorated or their engagement got called off soon after. Again, you could say, why are you on a show like this? If you can't handle an accelerated falling in love timeline, that's a good question, but I also think it's very realistic and it's very smart to recognize that, hey, me and this person aren't compatible. And so they say now that their friendship is really, really strong. She's seeing somebody else. She's keeping it close to the chest because she doesn't want to jinx things. So I'm happy for her. Leo, I think Leo has grown a little bit. He mentioned that watching the playback of him talking about his Rolex and his money all the time was a little cringy so that's good to hear even though he still kind of brought it up i guess old habits die hard he apologized to hannah and if i were hannah at this rate like who cares about this guy just accept it and move on but i don't personally know how how much i buy his apology as being sincere um but i do think it's good that he recognizes that he was incorrect so there's that's i think recognizing your faults is a first step and so you know leo you know good luck to you in the future okay the messes so i'll start since we're on the topic of hannah let's talk about the hannah and nick of it all so this story once again solidifies my issue with the producers and the editors and everybody keeping key information out that would, could really color how you look at these people. So obviously we know Hannah. Hannah was very rude, rude to Nick, very direct with, with um, Nick and all these things. And in the reunion, she kept on saying, oh, I'm just a direct person. I'm just a blunt person. So she was 26 then, so she's 27 now. Um, I think Hannah is still very immature. She says she's working on her language and how she speaks to people, but I don't really think that she is. Or if she is in that phase of correcting herself and learning, she's in the very infant stages of that. Because, yes, you can be blunt and you can be, or you can get your point across like pointedly without being blunt and just speaking plainly. Because if I'm being honest, I think I was kind of a blunt person before too. And literally this is probably in my late teens, teens, early twenties. By the time I got to be like my mid twenties or like my, my, um, towards the end of my early twenties, I got over that because you can't deal with people like that. You have to, you know, take a step back, see, and think about how this is going to be received. The information is going to be received by somebody and massage your message to make it diplomatic, make it not so rude and not to get other people's backs up. So her saying, yeah, I'm just, uh, yeah, that's not an excuse. And she is, uh, frankly, I think she's too old at this rate to still be operating in that mold. So I think she is immature. Um, I always thought she was immature. Also Nick, and I also thought Nick was immature too. Let's keep it real. So 
we learn that Nick told the guys that he was underwhelmed by her looks and that she looked like a grenade, which I'm kind of confused by because a, a grenade's basically like a round ball, a ball with a needle in it. So I guess maybe she looks like something that ex has experienced a grenade. I don't know, but I would assume that is not a flattering <laughs> picture he was trying to make. So this, like you can't, okay. So we know that she was underwhelmed by his looks, at least his like physical stature because she thought he'd be bigger and she couldn't honestly have thought that he was better looking than Travis Kelsey or resembled Henry Cavill. Like, come on, that no way in hell she thought that. Anyway, so he was telling people he was underwhelmed. That is very rude. That's very stupid. That, of course, in these tight quarters, that's going to get around. Um, but once again, there's a very good chance you're going to be underwhelmed by somebody's looks if you have no idea what they look like because you got engaged before you even saw them again this the concept of the show is ridiculous so but anyway knowing that and if you know this information got back to hannah i get the impression that it got back to hannah either before mexico or definitely before the time they left mexico so if i knew this i would not feel good about that i would be very upset about that and so and perhaps that explains why she was so rude to him. Um, but at the same time, that kind of is another indicator that you guys aren't a good match for each other. Um, if he doesn't think you're attractive, that's not good. If he doesn't have the good sense to, 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 um, to not tell people that, that shows that his character is kind of lacking too. It was very weaselly, I think, of Nick to deny it deny it deny it and then everyone else says okay come on nick like keep it real we're all here just tell your truth and then he admits to it so that's that's not like a look for him he has an image to uphold as he mentioned so that wasn't good and then hannah and then you know going on with the friend the, her best friend who yeah their best friends like okay and how she felt so betrayed by um how hannah was saying that she was going after nick and things like that it was just like, oh, this this sounds so high school. And also Marissa, Marissa girl, keep out of it, okay? You know your girl can speak for herself. Hannah has no problem letting people know exactly how she feels. You, Marissa, said that you've had to call Hannah out for her rudeness in the past. So don't don't fight for her. Don't worry about her. She can handle herself. So yes, I'm glad that... Um, they aren't together. And also and Hannah mentioning that she's got emails or DMs from other women who Nick promised to bring on the show. It's like, why, why, why do you care? Why do you care about this? Also her mentioning that notebook where Nick had his plans and one of them was to be the most famous person on Love is Blind. That's kind of corny to write. And I wouldn't be too impressed to see that on paper. But also, um, Hannah, um, you know that you want, you know that you are angling to be maybe one of the most infamous people on Love is Blind. And that's how you're coming across. And somebody mentioned, I think Nick did mention how much about how much hate she's getting online because of this. Like, first of all, what do you think people do on social media? You come on Netflix to do a ridiculous dating show and you're acting the fool the entire time. You think people online aren't going to talk about you? Be real. Okay, so that's the end of it. Now let's go on to what I think is the truest wreck. Um, and that is Tyler and Ashley. So, as we saw on the show, the revelation that Tyler had kids. We see, he mentions, yes, he gave sperm to a lesbian couple. And Ashley asked if the kids knew what he looked like. And he said no, but apparently right after that because because she said based on the look on his face and the expression in his voice that she knew that was a lie but afterwards they had a conversation and he revealed the true history of he this woman and these kids again this would have been nice to know beforehand because we were all under the impression at least we were just going up based on what we were seeing we thought that she didn't know actually he was a lot more involved in these kids life anyway of course they're married i wasn't sure if they still would have been married because actually when all the couples all the people came out we saw taylor and garrett coming out together holding hands 
and then Tyler and Ashley coming out holding hands and the others were just separate on their own. And so that was an indication to me, okay, I guess they are indeed still together, still married. Um, anyway, this is my main problem with that. And it's more so, again, I, Ashley is a grown woman. She can do what she wants to do. Um, if she, like people have stepchildren all the time. That's, that's totally cool. Um, but this is my biggest problem with Tyler and with the Netflix producers and everyone behind the scenes. It is the vetting process. Because in addition to these kids, I have seen court documents showing how much um, financial trouble, at least, Tyler has been in in the last few years from different court cases, traffic tickets, evictions. Apparently he had either six or eight evictions. He was evicted from his place a month before they started shooting this show. So that to me puts into question, how are these people being selected? Because if this person is if, was evicted days or weeks before he got on here, how can he come on and say, I want to be somebody's husband? And she met him, they fell in love, the emotions of it all, the momentum of it all, they went through and they got married. But now she's on the hook or potentially financially on the hook for a lot of his financial shortcomings for the rest of their marriage and beyond. And I don't think that's fair. And again, I don't know if she knows this, she could know this and be totally cool with it. Or he can have a secret stash of money ready to pay off all these debts and he can be free and clear whatever who really knows but again for someone to be walking into this situation you're not you're putting them at a disadvantage as i mentioned several times before ashley was the most traditional woman of all the women on the show i'd say and we know that she was almost i wouldn't say desperate to get married but she seemed to just really want to be married and this guy, I'm sure he loves her, treats her nice and things like that. I I'm not surprised that she stuck beside him. And so I just wish her well. I wish her better than what she got. But I wish her well and I hope that this marriage doesn't come to bite her in the butt um, soon or really any time. And so that's it. So again, Love is Blind, I think this show is absolutely insane. I wish for none of you to try out for the show. Do almost any other reality show than one where you're, you're going to end up legally tied to somebody who you don't really know. Side note, I have to say, the wardrobe of the participants here, especially the women, their dresses were horrible. I'm sorry. I did not like any of their dresses. I think Marissa's was passable. I think Taylor's, the bodice was kind of cool, very interesting, but the rest of them, those dresses were just plain ugly and not flattering. So yeah, and the men didn't do much better either. I say um, Garrett's jacket was a no. Rams's pants weren't very nice. I think the other guys, they were decent, kind of plain looking. Men's clothing, I don't really find to be all that interesting to begin with. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a superficial note for you. And that is all I have to say about Love is Blind. Um, it's been an interesting ride. I I will probably find myself watching season eight. I think it will actually be interesting to see a season where the contestants are from a smaller town because um, I just think it'd be an interesting perspective. So anyway, I will be back on I See Melanie to talk about that in the months to come. In the meantime, I have a whole bunch of other content Plan, so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of those things and next time for real you for real will see me gosh pray for me or do whatever you need to do talk it put out to the universe hopefully my eyelids will be much more attractive in the coming days all right bye everyone i'll see you later